Hello guys, welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about one of the top three most difficult parts of the IELTS reading exam. You're not talking about matching headings, are you? I am. Well, I disagree. I've got an, well, we've got an excellent method, and if you watch to the end of the video, you're going to become a master in matching headings. A lot more confident for sure. Yeah. I'm Michael. And I'm Phil. And you're watching the IELTS Grind. Remember to like and subscribe. Okay, so let's talk about matching Headings. Okay. So first of all, um, let's what talk about... What is matching yeah. headings? Yeah, so you probably have seen them where you have a list of headings mm -hmm. and you need to match them to a paragraph. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now let's talk about the skills that we need. Okay, first of all, you, this, the whole reason this question is on the test is to test your skimming ability. Which is? That's your ability to understand the main idea of the whole paragraph. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, and uh, in addition to skimming, you can use uh, certain tools to make the job easier mm -hmm. for you. Um, the best of which is scanning. Scanning, yeah. yeah. So you're also going to be looking for particular words, um, mainly From just, the heading. just to get you to the right place, really. Yep. Yeah. And for both of these skills, you should not be reading slowly and you should not be reading everything. No. The reason why you shouldn't read everything is because you're not a native speaker you probably won't find it as easy as we will to keep all that information in your head. But also, that's not what you're being tested on here. It, you're being tested on how many questions you can get right. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes there will be whole paragraphs you don't read because there's no question in it. Yeah. So, um, talking about paragraphs, um, there's a really important skill with how a paragraph is made yeah. up, right? Understanding the structure of English paragraphs. A good English paragraph will always have a topic sentence and then supporting details that connect to that topic sentence. Definitely, yeah. Um, your topic sentence is usually found in the first, second, or last sentence of the paragraph. Yeah. Most often it's first. Yeah. So this is something that you should also know for your writing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this will really help you with the structure of your writing. Okay, and there's also another skill that's I think essential to mm -hmm. this task, which is time control. Yeah. So time control is being able to really quickly go through these questions. And the main thing here is you need to be able to read quickly and then you also need to know when to skip. Yeah. which we'll be talking about more. Definitely. Now, there's one more skill here, which is paraphrasing, right? Yeah, paraphrasing. What exactly is that? Um, well, that's saying the same thing, giving the same information, but give, giving it with different words, okay? And in the IELTS test, they love to do this. So you need to really practice this skill, which involves uh, basically vocabulary, I would mm -hmm. say, uh, learning synonyms. This is really going to help you here. Okay. okay. And now we're moving on to the method, the approach that yeah. you use to do this. Yeah. Uh, the very first thing you do is you always need to look at the title. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie, this is something that I often skip, but it is really important. I think it's just important. Um, I think that we agree that the main thing you can do here is to identify keywords that you should not be looking for later on. Yes. So let's say if uh, the title was the life cycle of a bee, for example. And then if you see B in the heading, yeah. <laughs> that yeah. is not a key word because yeah. the whole article is going to be about bees. Yeah. So this is a very quick uh, step, but it can really help you later on. Yes. Okay. And that was step number one. Yeah. Step number two is to look at the questions. That should <laughs> always be the first thing you do. Yeah. In all aspects of the arts exam, always, always, always read the question first. This is an essential skill and you should be going through them, um, you know, one by one. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So when what's... when you're looking at the questions, there's two things you should be looking for. The first one is the main idea or the main theme. And again, where will you find this? That's right, in the topic sentence. Yeah. So yep, you're you're trying to find the main theme so that when you read the text, you'll see it very quickly in the topic sentence. Yeah. And then um, in addition to that, you should be looking for keywords. So the best kind of keywords are really um, words that won't change. So proper nouns, the mm -hmm. names for people or things, um, and also um, words that don't change. So just for example, like um, American. Um, there's not many ways to say American. Possibly USA might be used as a synonym. Those are the kind of things we're looking for to help us later on. Okay. Now the third thing that you're going to be doing is while you're looking at the questions, you need to identify possible distractors. 
Okay. What's a distractor? Well, it's something that the IELTS examiner uses to try and fool you, to trick you, to try and make you choose the wrong answer. Those are just terrible people, yeah. those IELTS examiners. But it's a really good way to separate higher and lower level students, okay? The so, first thing yeah. that you need to do is you need to, and you wonder, when you do more and more tests, you'll see these patterns, is that oftentimes there are going to be two headings that are quite similar to each other. Mm. They may have similar themes or similar keywords, and that's a hint to you. This is actually really helpful, because that means that one of them is probably an answer, and the other is probably a distractor. Yeah. So when you're reading through the text, and you find a paragraph, and you find the topic sentence, you'll very easily be able to say, it's probably one of these two. It's yeah. probably one of these two. So when you do see uh, examples like that, just maybe draw a line between them, just mm -hmm. to remind yourself later on that if you do think one of them is a possible answer, you really double check. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, another kind of distractor you might come across at this stage is uh, one that uses high-level vocabulary, or just just a word that you don't really know in the heading. In the heading, yeah. So um, when you come across this, it's tough, tough luck. luck. Yeah, really. Um, <laughs> it's. I mean, what what do you say about um, the IELTS exam? So some people say yeah. that the IELTS exam is just one big vocabulary test. Yeah. I They're not it. wrong. Like that, it. It, that's it. And this is why it's so important for you to do well with vocabulary, for you to keep studying vocabulary. Yeah. If you see a high-level word that you don't know in the text, usually you can figure it out from yeah. the surrounding words. Definitely. When it happens in the headings... Yeah, it's, it's kind of... You just got to build your vocabulary. So make sure you're, you're reading as often as you can. That's the best way to build vocabulary. Okay. Step four, mm. you need to identify the topic sentence. This is when you start skimming and scanning. Yeah. Um, and uh, step five is actually really connected here. You should be going paragraph by paragraph. Yeah. So, so go to the first paragraph, try to find the topic sentence. Where should it be again? Well, it's going to be either the first, second, or last sentence. Okay. And then once you have found it, then you start looking through each of the headings. Yeah. That's step five, yeah, is so compare. What, yeah, so what you want to do is, it's, it's basically a list. So you, you read your topic sentence, make sure you identify what the theme is, and you're going back to your list and just saying, is there anything here? No. Anything with the second one? No. Third one? Maybe. And then you go on and you do everything. Even when you think you found a match, check all the other headings and just make sure that you haven't fallen from one of those distractors. Ooh. Yeah. So once you think you've got a match, what do we do next? What's the next step? Well, there's two steps. So mm. if you haven't found a match, yeah. then you should skip. That's step yeah. six, is if you can't find a clear match, skip it, go to the next one. And why do we do that? Well, it's because you're just trying to get as many points as you can in the time. Time so control. I would not spend more than, more than a minute trying to find one of these answers, mm -hmm. really. And don't forget, you can skip it and come back after you've gone through the other headings, or even come back right at the end of the reading test when you've read all the other questions. Exactly. So only one point. Now, if you didn't skip it, if you do think you have the answer or you think mm. you're close, you should verify. That's step seven. Step yeah. seven is verify. Make sure that you have it right and you're not falling for a distractor. Yeah. Now, there's two separate ways that you can do this. Yeah. So um, the first way is to use the keywords, okay? So what you're trying to do is once you've found a possible match with your heading, you go back to the text and you're trying to find the same information as in the heading. This could be a synonym or it could be a another phrase. And you're just going back and trying to match it. Now the issue here is with what we call tricky words. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you may have headings with keywords that in the text, they appear not in the topic sentence, but actually within the details or supporting sentences. So make sure that when you're going back and you're finding the matching words, that the main theme and the keyword match up. It's not just the detail. Yes, and sometimes those tricky words, you, you see the keyword from the heading, and it's in other paragraphs as yeah. well. Like that, that, it, that can be confusing. <laughs> yes. But one thing to get around this is when you're 
verifying your paragraph with the keywords. If you see the keyword again and again and again, that's usually a good indication that yeah. this paragraph is for that heading. Definitely, yeah. Now, the second method that you can use is the supporting details method or the mm -hmm. details method. Remember, you're taught, you're, a good paragraph has a topic sentence and then supporting details. So if you can't understand the topic sentence because of grammar or high level vocabulary, what you can do is see how the details connect. If you can't understand the topic sentence, but you understand the details, those details should be connecting to your heading. If they do, that's the answer. Now, there are two distractors that you need to be careful when you're doing this method. The first one is the detail hiding in the headings distractor. Mm -hmm. What this means is sometimes in your list of headings, there is a detail. So it is in the text. You can see it. You can go, here's the sentence from the heading. Here's the sentence in the text. Ha, huh, I found it, right? Sometimes that's a detail. Remember, your heading should be talking about the whole paragraph. So if it's just one line, it's probably wrong. Yeah. Okay. Secondly, and this is an easier distractor, is the not given distractor. Sometimes one of the headings is just not talked about anywhere in the text. And that's obviously wrong. Yeah. yeah. And I think largely you're going to eliminate that anyway if you do the methodical through the list. Because mm -hmm. it's not even going to come up as an option. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So there are two different methods you can use, but don't forget, um, as we say, belts and braces, you can use both to make sure that you're not making any mistakes. They're always going to be the same answer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that brings us to step number eight. Yeah. So I've gone through all of the headings. I still can't find the answer for a particular one. What do I do? Guess. Just guess. Especially with this one, because it has to be one of the numbers. At this stage, you're probably going to be left with maybe four or five options. That's pretty good odds there. Okay. 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 So we've gone through the method. Yes, we have. So I think it's about time that we look at some examples to show you exactly how to do this. So you become masters of matching headings. I believe you can do it. So it's quite simple. All we're going to do is just go through those steps that we've mentioned. So step one is... Step one is look at the title. Okay. Now the title of this one is Gaming, Good or Bad. From this, we know two things. Number one, it's about gaming and whether it's positive or negative. And secondly, we know that gaming is not going to be a key word. Yeah, I wouldn't be looking for that one. I don't think it's going to be very useful. OK, so now we know the title. We mm -hmm. don't need to look at the text anymore. Let's turn our attention to the list of headings. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to read each one and go through the other steps where we're looking for the main topic or theme. Yeah and keywords, keywords yeah. and some distractors. Yeah, I think this, we can identify certain ones just through this process. Okay, mm -hmm. so number one on the list is? A serious addiction. Oh, okay. Now I'm cheating a little bit here because as a native speaker, I would definitely say the key word is addiction. addiction. But I mentioned that a distractor could be high level vocabulary. If you didn't know what addiction was, this could kind of trip you up. Mm -hmm. You may find this difficult to answer. But okay, we're going to say addiction for now. Okay. Yeah. What's number two? Number two is the causes of this dreadful affliction. Okay. Again, that's some high level vocabulary there. Affliction, definitely. Even if you knew addiction, which if you did know it, good job, you probably don't know affliction. You do probably know that dreadful is bad. Yeah. But the I, I think we can still get the main idea here, right? Mm -hmm. How do we do that? What is it? Well, if we go back and look at that word causes, mm. yeah. So here we're going to have a list of um, causes, obviously reasons why something happened. Um, but if we know our structure for articles, yes, we can kind of guess where this might be, right? Yes. Because and this is this is another useful tool that you can mm. use is understanding articles. Generally, causes coming before effects. Uh, generally, you have predictions and things at the end of an article. Mm. So in this instance, we know causes. This probably won't be the first paragraph, but it's going to be near the middle of the beginning. Yes, you sound a little bit like Winston Churchill there. <laughs> <laughs> British accent and everything? No, just the, a famous speech. <laughs> Moving on. So um, we're looking for causes. Yes, mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, number three is the harmful effects. Mm -hmm. Nice and easy one here. We all know effects. 
and then harmful is bad or negative. Okay, so it must be negative effects. Again, and you, you should find this after causes. Yeah, and I was also going to say that uh, it's going to be a list of more than one thing, right? Exactly, yeah. that's another very important thing. Remember, if this is the heading, that means everything here is about the effects. Yeah. Okay, so if we move on to number four, mm -hmm. why people game? I think there's a pretty easy synonym we've got here. Reasons. Yep. And remember, just like we just said, if this is a heading, the whole paragraph needs to be about reasons. It should basically be a list of reasons, yeah. right? But if we just talk about it again, why people game, does that kind of sound similar to anything we've read before? Yeah, yeah. number two, right? Yeah. So because no, why and causes. Yeah, so the causes of this dreadful affliction and why. So I think that's one of those pairs, possibly a distractor, right? Yeah, we should draw a little arrow connecting the two of them. Yeah, just m remind ourselves later on to double check before we choose either of those as mm -hmm. an answer. OK, number five, we've got possible benefits. Again, this one's pretty easy. Benefits are good things. Yeah. Yes. So, um, but if we talk about structure again, mm -hmm. can we kind of predict roughly where this might be? Probably near the end. Yeah, I, I don't think it would Middle be, end. Yeah, not in the first third or first half. Mm -hmm. I don't think, not normally. Okay, so we're looking for benefits. Um, if we move on, we've got... Teamwork is important. Okay. So I think the key idea is going to be teamwork. Mm -hmm. Something to do with teams yes. working together. Yeah. And... The entire paragraph here is going to have to be about teamwork, right? And why it's important. Yeah. Exactly. It will either have to be why teamwork is important, how important teamwork is, or how teamwork is important. Maybe The whole thing needs yeah. to be about this. You might see some examples of yeah. why it's important, yeah. Okay, so teamwork is a good key word here. And that brings us on to the final example we've got. A worldwide hobby. Okay. Now, for me, I think the key word is probably hobby. Mm. I think... I think it's probably worldwide. Well, maybe it's just like popular hobby. Uh, Lots of people like it. I see. And because hobby is the word that doesn't change really easily, that's yeah. a better keyword here. I, that's what I would look for. Yeah, OK. Yeah. OK, so um, we've gone through the headings. We've decided what the key themes are. We've decided what key words we might scan for. Mm -hmm. um, so what do we do now? Now we move on to step three, okay. which is to methodically uh, to find the topic sentence. Yeah. So um, what we're going to do is in every he matching heading task in the exam, you always get an example, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to give you our example, and we're actually going to go through it together and just to talk about why it is the answer. Okay? Yes. So let's do that. Let's read the first paragraph and talk about the topic sentence. OK. So remember, where do you usually find the topic sentence first? second or last paragraph. So here's the first sentence. Esports has taken the world by storm. Does that sound like a topic sentence to you? Well, I have to admit, Michael, I'm, I'm kind of cheating. I'm a native speaker, so I know that that is the topic sentence. Yes, it's very clear to us. But it's quite a tricky phrase, isn't it? Yeah. Take the world by storm. And even esports. Yeah. You know? so. If we were in the exam, right, if I was uh, a student taking the IELTS, at this point, I probably would skip. Yes. Because I couldn't guess what that is just from that one sentence, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's imagine we've done that. We skipped, we've answered all the other uh, questions in the reading exam, mm -hmm. we've come to it, we've got about five minutes before the end of the test. So what would I do next? Next, we will be looking at the other sentences, yeah, right? Yeah, I'd, I'd want to read this next sentence, but only after I've skipped it the first time. Yes, okay. we've come back to yeah. this question. Yeah. Okay, so what, lay it on me, what's the second <laughs> sentence? It is found on ESPN, the sports network, and is seen as a serious professional goal by many young people. Okay, so just from that, that phrase, it is found. So it is, that's referencing back to the subject of the previous sentence, right? Mm -hmm. Which, Which is... is Esports. Okay, so that could tell me that the first sentence, esports, is the entire topic. Mm -hmm. And if we look at it more closely, that the word "world" and taking the world by storm, it does kind of ring a bell. Okay. Okay. So what I would do here is, 
is because I know that the first sentence is the topic sentence, likely. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go through my headings and see if I can find any matches, right? Yep. Methodically so, yeah. go through each one. Okay, so we said that in a real IELTS scenario, we'd probably be doing this at the end. Mm -hmm. So we would have a lot fewer examples to look through. Mm -hmm. But what we're going to do for you is to look through every single heading, and we're just going to go through it and see if it seems to match or not. Okay. So the first one, it's something about addiction. What do you think? I don't think this has anything to do with addiction. No. It's not mentioned, it's not anywhere in there. Yeah. yeah. How about uh, causes? No, and that, again, that would be found later. Yeah. This is a bit too early. What, tell me about effects. How do you feel about effects here? Again, that would be found later in the text, yeah. and yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think it matches. Um, why people game? Not really. That's not mentioned. No, and again, it wouldn't be found this early in the Yeah, essay. I don't think so. I mean, those two sentences we, we had. No. Okay. Um, any mention of benefits? No. And it's, it's like a broken record, right? It's too early in the text. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, teamwork. It must be teamwork. No, not mentioned once. Nothing there. So the last is a worldwide hobby. <gasps> There we go. It's almost like it's planned. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what we need to do now is if we've got to this stage and nothing else matches, mm. if we still have time, we really want to verify. Yeah? It's possible that a lower level student would just see world and worldwide and just choose Ticket. it. To be honest, it would be a good guess if you were running out of time, right? Exactly. If you were running out of time, it would be a good guess. But this is also a popular way the examiner tries to trick you with a distractor. Yeah. It's a tricky word. You see it in the heading and you see it in the text and you go, ah, this must be the answer. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's go through and try and verify it. So we can do this in two different ways, right? Mm -hmm. We can use the keyword uh, method. So we were talking about hobbies and worldwide. Mm -hmm. So any mention of a hobby or something popular. So if we look, um, in the second sentence, it mentions the sports network. Yes. So sports is definitely uh, another term for a free time activity, a hobby. Or a hobby. Ding! Yeah. And by the way, this is a really common way that the IELTS exam will trick you. Yeah. They will have a general word or sentence in the heading and then give you specific examples in the details. And you're going to have to see that connection. Those tricky examiners. Yes. And the <laughs> same goes with esports. Many of you probably don't know this word, unless you're a gamer. Yeah. I see you guys. <laughs> but we can see that eSports has sports in it, which yeah. is another yeah. hobby. Yes. Yeah, it was hiding behind that E, right? Yes. Um, and also, I've just noticed that um, it mentions mobile games. Another hobby. So, and if we were talking about um, worldwide, yes, we've got that word world. Mm -hmm. But perhaps we can check that with using another method. Which is, as we said before, the details method. Okay, so how does that work? So remember guys, the structure of a, top, uh, of a paragraph has a topic sentence, which is what the whole paragraph is about, and then many details that connect to that topic sentence. So if you don't really understand the topic sentence because of vocabulary or grammar or tiding, you should see if the details connect to the heading. Yeah. The way that this works is worldwide. Okay. We already saw hobby was really good because we saw it many times in the text using the keyword method. The fact that you saw it many times is a really good indicator that it's the correct answer. But to really make sure, a worldwide hobby means a hobby done by everyone. Here they do say everyone. If we look at the other sentences, but it is only but it is not only young people who partake in it. Young people do it. People in their thirties and forties often game. Those people do it. And if we include mobile games, many older people also pass the time this way. Older people. Young people, middle aged people, older people. Sounds is, pretty popular to me. Is that everybody? <laughs> yeah, most yeah. people, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So a worldwide hobby, that's everybody. Yeah. So what you can do is use both these methods just to always get the right answer. Yeah? Sometimes one of them will give you the answer um, immediately. Sometimes you might need to use a different one. Yeah? Mm -hmm. so, um, but they will always get you the same answer. Yeah, this, is, this is the thing. So it's, um, there's a phrase in English, uh, belts and braces, 
where you basically have a safety net. Ah. So you, you do two things that will guarantee the right event, uh, okay. right result. Okay, so that was our example. And in fact, every single time that you have the heading matching task, as I said, you get this example. What should we do with the example though? Cross it off. Yeah. So I, I do, I've seen this before. Some of my students have used the example as one of their answers. And you don't want to do that. You're just throwing away points, basically. And it's one less thing that you need to think about. On yeah. the real exam, first thing you should do, cross out the example. So we're going to cross that one out. OK, guys, what we would like you to do now is to try this yourself. So we're going to put um, some more paragraphs up on the screen and all of the headings and ask you to go through them and do exactly the same thing, those eight steps. And um, we're going to come back and give you the answers. Good luck, guys. And don't forget, if this is a little bit difficult to do this on your screen at the moment, you can go over to our website and you can see this in a much better format. Um, and we'll put that link in the description so you can do that. All right, guys, are you done? Do you hate English? <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, what we're going to do now is actually go through it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we're going to give you our answers and see if you came to the same conclusions, if you agree with us, OK? So we've already done um, paragraph A. Mm -hmm. It was actually the example. So shall we kick off with paragraph two? Of course. OK, so do you want to read it to me? Of course. Uh, we're just reading the first sentence. Yeah. Hopefully, that's the topic sentence. However, there are many decrying this hobby, claiming that people are not only playing these games for fun, but because they can't stop. Um, okay. Okay. Um, I, I think I know what it is, again, because I'm a native speaker. Ah. But 
How do you know? Well, uh, well, we don't think you guys would probably yeah, get it I, from that sentence. I, so, I don't. I think in the exam from that sentence alone, I don't think I can match it with anything. So I'm just going to skip that. Mm -hmm. Can we come back to that later? Of course. Okay. So let's skip that one. Can we look at the next one? Of course. Yeah. Regardless, so paragraph C. Regardless of your viewpoint, there is no one reason why people game. Ah, uh, okay. I'm fairly confident I've heard this one before. Mm. Um, so it mentions uh, reason. Yeah. And then it has the phrase why people game. Ooh. And I'm I'm fairly sure this is something. I'm I'm okay. I want to test this one. Okay. Can we move on to the next stage? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go through the headings, okay? One by one. So number one was... About... A serious addiction. Does mm. it sound like a serious addiction to you? No, definitely okay. not. Number two, the causes of this dreadful affliction. Um, Ooh, causes. It's possible. Causes and reasons. I'm going to say maybe for that one. Okay. Okay, let's see what's next. Number three, the harmful effects. No, I think it's more causes and effects, just okay. from what we've read. So, and I, How about number four, why people game? Well, this is the one that jogged my memory. Mm. I think, I would say that's also a maybe, but let's see what's next. Okay. Possible benefits. I don't think it was talking about benefits. So. Teamwork is important. Again, it didn't mention teamwork in that sentence, so no. Okay, so I've got uh, number two and number four. Okay. But... Those were our pairs, right? Aha! Uh -huh. They seem to be linked. Yeah. So, what? How can we? You know, what's the difference between the causes of this dreadful affliction and why people gain? How can we tell the, the right answer? Well, if we look at number two a little bit more closely, the yeah. heading number two. Yeah. We can see dreadful, so we know that it's probably negative. Oh, okay. Okay. So and let's... this is probably connected to, if you know the referencing, addiction. If you know that okay. word. Okay. So let's have a look through it. Um, so we got as far as the first sentence. Mm -hmm. So if we skim through it, it's kind of looking at, it mentions uh, ways to relieve stress. Ooh. Um, and then I can see it says uh, a way to escape. Okay. And there's also something about to grow closer with friends. Okay. This seems to me like a list of things. So again, it could be causes or it could be reasons. But still. what are they a list of? It's why. Yeah. But I've also just noticed something. It says which is objectively dreadful. <gasps> and below it says above mentioned affliction. <gasps> which are these? It's the words, right? From two. <laughs> okay. But the thing is, in the topic sentence, it says why people game. And then the dreadful and the affliction, those two words are not in the topic sentence. They're in the details. Yeah, and we mentioned that before, did we? Yes, we did. Yeah, so sometimes you can get distractors that are hiding in the details, right? This so, is exactly that. Yeah, so of those two, I would say it's number three. You mean number four? Oh, number four, sorry, yeah. Number four. <laughs> Why people game? Why people, that's the whole yes. I mean. yeah. yeah, number four. And that's because <laughs> this whole, all the details in this paragraph are connecting to that main idea. Yeah. yeah. And also using the keyword method. Each of those examples were examples of reasons why people game. Yeah. Uh, to go into a, a little bit more detail with the detail with the tricky words or details hiding in the uh, details hiding in the distracted heading. hiding in the details. <laughs> details hiding in, in, in the headings. Please cut that. Okay. Details hiding in the in the headings. Um, we see here which is objectively dreadful. We know using our grammar knowledge this is a relative clause, and so it's just describing one noun. Yeah. That's not the whole paragraph. Yeah. Good old grammar. Helps every, us out every time. Every single time. <laughs> okay. So um, let's move on and look at the next paragraph. Yep. All right. So this is uh, paragraph D. Yep, paragraph okay. D. Okay. There are so many reasons to game. <sighs> oh, that sounds really familiar. Maybe I'll, did I make a mistake? Okay, let's carry on reading. Okay. So much to take away from it. Ah, okay. Right. Um, yeah. Can we, so I just want to see, can we check the other topic sentences? So, so, so first, first, second, second, 
and last. And last, okay. Yeah, so let's, let's read those. So we read the first, we okay. read the second. Uh, well, sorry, that was a comma. The second is, a lot of people see it already. We are seeing schools add gaming to their curriculum to make content more engaging. That's definitely a detail, right? Yeah, and... So yeah, okay. How about... How about the, the third one, right? Yeah. The, 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 the last sentence. Okay. There are just so many benefits. Ah, okay. That, that helps me out. <laughs> that helps me out. Because, yeah, the first topic sentence there... Uh, the first sentence. The first sentence, sorry. There are so many reasons to game. That kind of made me think I made a mistake with C. Yeah. But by reading that last sentence, which is, in fact, the topic sentence. Exactly. Here, All the sentences connect to that one. It's, it's telling me the theme is benefits. So let's go back through the, the list, because mm -hmm. we always want to do this. It's not talking about addictions. No. An addiction, I don't think there. It's not a dreadful affliction or causes. Nope. And those words aren't even anywhere yeah. in there. Uh, it doesn't mention the effects. Nope. Um, it can't be number four because I, I'm fairly confident that's yeah. for C. Um, possible benefits. Hey. Ding, ding, right on the nose. Yep. But let's double check. Did it mention teamwork at all? It did. In ah, a, okay. In a detail. So let's double check then. What's so the many games are team games, but they never say about how important teamwork is. Yeah. And this is just one little detail. It's not even yeah. given. I, I would say this is a not given yeah. kind of distractor. Yeah. It's never mentioned in the text. Okay, so you, you, you support my answer. It's. Oh, yeah, the, for that, sure. Yeah, so which number is that again? This yeah. is number. Five. Number five. Yeah, okay. I'm Possible pretty benefits. Okay. Right, so I've gone through all of my headings there, but mm -hmm. I've forgotten or I've skipped number B. B? Num number B. Number B. Number B. <laughs> so I've skipped B. Um, so shall we go back and have another look at that and yeah. see if we can figure it out? For sure. Okay. So what? how far did we get? Well, we read the topic sentence and it was too difficult. Yeah. Well, I, as a native speaker, I do know what it's about. <gasps> Shocking, right? Cheater. But let's let's see how we could get uh, to the answer, okay? Okay. So the thing that jumped out for me was the phrase "can't stop." Ah. So they're playing a game and they can't stop. So it's not about choice; it's physically or, or mentally they they cannot stop playing the games. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? That's a bad thing, right? Mm. And also, if I look through. There's a few things that come up. Um, so it talks about addicts. Mm. And in the last line, there's addicted. So this is why vocabulary is so important. If you know the word addict, you should see that it is just a different form of addiction. Yeah. Addiction is the noun of the thing. Addict is the noun of the person. Yeah. And to be addicted is the verb. So if I was to go back through my list now, um, number one, a serious addiction. Mm -hmm. That kind of fits. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Keyword method yeah. right there. Yeah. Um, the causes, I don't think it's talking about that there. Mm -hmm. um, effects, well, I did notice the last two ah, words. Ah, negative effects. Negative. And there are other negative effects. Now, is that the topic sentence, though? It is the last line. Is it like in mm. D? No, I think that's just... It's just a detail. Yes, it's just a detail. So it, it can't be negative effects. Um, it can't be number three. Can't be, uh, it can't be number four, sorry. Mm. The, uh, because we found that answer. Game. Can't be number five. We found that answer too. And teamwork, does it mention it there? Not once. No. Okay. So just by knowing, maybe not even knowing the word addicts and addicted, it just looks kind of like that word, right? So I think this would be a good guess. Yes. Yeah. And... Again, if you don't know these words, that's the best you can do. Yeah. Make an estimate, uh, a good guess, and then also use process of elimination to make your odds better. Yeah. Now, that being said, there's one more trick that you can do, which is you can use your grammar knowledge, again, I know, crazy, <laughs> to make a better guess. Yeah. So articles are words like a uh and the. A uh is the indefinite article, mm -hmm. like an apple, yeah. a tuba. A cat. And then the is the definite article. Yeah. In English, the indefinite article is usually seen in the beginning, and then the definite article is found later on. Yeah. 
if we look at these two paragraphs, both the example and this one, the example, a worldwide hobby, we see a, uh, it should be one of the first couple paragraphs. And then if we look at a serious addiction, it's the same thing. Yeah, a uh, is one of the first couple paragraphs. Yeah. Okay, guys, so hopefully you got the same answers and you did it in exactly the same way. So this is by far the best method that we know of getting the answers for this type of question. It just is methodical. You just do the same thing and if you follow those eight steps, you're going to be very successful in this type of question in the IELTS. If you're interested in seeing more, let us know in the comments and we'll be more than happy to put more content out there probably with some longer, more difficult readings and questions, or some easier ones if you thought this one was too hard. Yeah. So what we haven't done, we haven't gone through the text in detail and spoken about all of the, the words, the vocabulary, but we have, just for you guys, made a special video, which you can go to if you look at the link in the description of the end of this video as well, and we'll but go through everything. Before you do that, make sure you check out our other video on yes, no, not given. Yep. We're using the same text, and if you learn the vocab before you do that one, it's cheating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. If this is your first time watching us, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you next time. See you next time.